just what I need. Oh, he knows just what I need. Yes, he knows just what I need. Oh, he knows just what we need. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Uh, good morning, Shore Christian Church. It's so good to be uh, back in the, in the pulpit. Uh, Al did a fantastic job last Sunday. Uh, so blessed that I have just some great preachers that uh, God has blessed his church with, uh, and, and Al and, and Uriah and, and the guest speakers. Uh, so thankful for that. And Al delivered just a fantastic message last Sunday. And what we're going to be doing for the next three weeks is just starting a little mini-series that is going to lead us up to Easter. We're going to be calling it uh, The Switch. And the purpose of that is to talk about, you know, what, what happens when Jesus comes in our life, the switch that takes place. And uh, what we're going to be talking about this morning is uh, the transitional switches, the, the many different switches that take place in our lives. And so uh, the first passage, I'm going to go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse uh, 11. And uh, while we're, we're looking that up, um, I, I read a, a, a little cute story uh, this week. It was about uh, three people. It was about a, a Russian, an American, and a blonde. And they were all together, and they're walking down the road. And the Russian starts bragging and, and says to, to the blonde and the American uh, that our people, the Russians, we were the first to go into outer space. How about that? And then the American said, well, we were the first to land and walk on the moon. How about that? And then the blonde says, well, us blondes, we're going to be the first to walk on the sun. And the Russian, the American, they just start laughing. Like, How, you, you, you're so dumb. You, you burn up. You wouldn't be able to survive. The blonde says, we're, we're, we're not dumb. We're going to go at night, of course. Tough crowd. It's a tough crowd this morning. All right. You guys got to loosen up a little bit, okay? This isn't mass. Uh, all right. Here we go. Philippians chapter, t chapter 4, uh, verse 11. And this is the Apostle Paul talking. And the Apostle Paul, in this moment, he's, he's in a Roman prison. He's writing this letter to the church of Philippi. And uh, this, is, this, this is one of the most impactful scriptures for me. Uh, so Paul says, he says, I'm not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I find myself in. That is one of the greatest gifts that you could have as a man, as a woman, is to be able to live content in any circumstance. It is so difficult to be around a person and emotionally you never know where they're going to be at. Because they are so up and down. Because their emotions, their feelings, their joy, everything about them is solely based off of the circumstances around them. That is not a kingdom godly principle. Uh, if, if you're that person, then, then God wants to grow you. Because you can get to a place, like Paul is saying, that you could be content and blessed and happy and fulfilled no matter what season that you are in. And then Paul unpacks that a little bit. He says... I know what it is like to be in need, to be in want, to, to, to not have a lot of money coming in, to be in the soup kitchen line, uh, to have to live month at a time, to not know how I'm going to pay my bills. I know what that's like, and I know what it is like to have plenty. But I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or living in want. And uh, this is the secret. Uh, and you may know this one. Actually, let's just, let's just say, say it together. I can do all things through him, Christ, who gives me strength. That's the secret. And then uh, Mark chapter 4, this is going to be uh, kind of the, the main text that I'm going to speak out of. Uh, and I'm going to start in verse, uh, verse 1. Uh, it says, again, Jesus, he began to teach by the lake. And a crowd gathered around him, and it was a large crowd. And so Jesus got into a boat, and he went out into the lake. While all the people along the shores and the water's edge, they, they started listening to him. And he taught them many things by parables. And in his teachings, he said this, A farmer went out to sow seed. 
and Jesus begins to share this parable, and he talks about uh, this man who sows seed, and some falls on rocky soil, and some falls on uh, uh, um, soil that gets snatched up by, by birds. The seed gets snatched up by birds. Some of the seed falls around thorns, but some falls on good soil. And that soil takes root. And Jesus uh, explains this parable to his disciples and talks about how the seed that the farmer is sowing, it's the word of God, that it's, it's sown. And, and it, the, the same word goes out, but some of it produces a crop and some of it gets scorched by the heat, gets eaten up by thorns because of the soil that it lands on. And we are the soil. That's what Jesus is trying to describe. Uh, and then uh, he shares this other parable. He says in, in verse 26, he said, uh, this is what the kingdom of God is like. Again, talking about seed. A man scattering seed on the ground. And whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. Uh, I like the way that the message translation uh, writes this. It says, it says, then Jesus said, the kingdom of God is like seed thrown on a field by a man who sows the seed and then goes to bed and forgets about it, sows the seed, and then goes to sleep. Uh, let's just have a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this morning. I uh, just pray that you help me deliver this message in a way that is relevant to everyone in here, Lord God. Uh, help me, Father, to be able to hear your voice as I speak, Lord. And I just pray, Father, that the seed that goes out, the word that is spoken this morning, will land on good soil that everyone's heart will be receptive, whatever is trying to block you from, receive, from rejecting this morning's word, I just rebuke it in the name of Jesus, that your heart will be good soil. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So what I really want to talk about today, that the topic is uh, uh, transition, transition. Uh, I, I found that life is all about transitions going from one season to the next season to the next season. And I have seen some people that are able to do this very well and some people that are not able to do this well at all. Uh, you live a little bit and you see all of the transitions in life. Um, you have children, you understand all of the transitions in life that they go through. And it, it's almost comical, uh, the, the times that we're in today with, with our kids uh, is probably, for, for me and Diamond, probably the most difficult because uh, they, they think they know it, certain things more than we do because they watched a YouTube video. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's a tough time of transition. It, it's so different dealing with our older kids versus, versus Dewey. Uh, Dewey listens to us at the drop of a hat. The other kids need an explanation as to exactly why we're ex explaining and telling them to do those things because it, it's, a, it's a season of transition. Uh, our, our kids get older, they're, they're going to go through some things. And, and I, I've seen people transition well, and I've seen people not transition well. Uh, that's what Jesus is, is really talking about with his disciples is he wants to transition them into a new season. Uh, he's transitioning them from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The old way that they used to receive the word to the way that Jesus wants them to receive it now. The old way that they used to relate to God and now the new way that they are supposed to relate to God. How they used to relate to him based off of works and now Jesus is gonna tr trying to um, I've transitioned them to understand that it's not by works, but it is by grace. It is by love. And so Jesus says, I want to take you to the other side. That's what he says in, in verse, uh, I think it's 35 of chapter 4. Uh, after he sows this parable to them, shares the word, he says, all right, now I want to go over to the other side. I want to transition you to a new level where there's new miracles and there's new works that I want you to do in my name and there's new levels that I want to take you to. Let's go to the other side. That's what Jesus speaks over his disciples. The thing about transitions, and I've, I've experienced so many, it almost seems like once you get comfortable in one area of your life, all of a sudden God's like, nope, I'm going to take you somewhere else. I, I remember when I got so comfortable uh, leading the, the Jersey Shore Dream Center, and I felt so good in the, in the place that God had brought me, and I felt comfortable, I felt committed, and then all of a sudden, in an instant, I transitioned out of that. 
God arranged circumstances through my father going up to heaven, and, and now I had to transition into something I've never done before. I had to transition into a place that I never thought that I would be at that point in my life. I thought it would happen one way, and God had completely different plans, and now I went from something comfortable into something very, very uncomfortable, because that's what God will do, is, is that he wants to always grow us, and the way God grows us is he gets us out of our comfort zone and brings us into a new place, but our problem is, is we we get so stuck in what we're comfortable with and what we're used to and the way things always have been and the places that we've always gone that God says, I want to point, bring you into a new place, but we get so hung up on the old ways, how things used to be. I, I hear this so much from, from people, man, I, I wish church was the way it used to be. I wish God moved the way that he did it through Billy Graham and through this evangelist. Billy Graham and the great evangelist of C.S. Lewis and, and Derek Prince, they had their day, but they're not here anymore. God is going to do a new thing, a new way. That's what the kingdom of God is always about, is doing the same thing a new way. But if we want to always repeat history, then we're going to miss God. God doesn't want to repeat history. God always wants to make history. And if you are resistant to the new thing that God wants to do because it doesn't happen the way that you want it to and it doesn't happen when you want it to or how you expect it to be, then you will miss God moving in your life because he always wants to transition us to a different place. And some of the people that I have found that are, are so bitter and, and angry and frustrated at life are the people who always live with a mind frame of things never ha can change. Things always have to stay the same. That, that whenever things start changing, they start complaining. But God is always, see, he is never changing, but always doing new things. Uh, this is what Luke chapter 5 says. Luke chapter 5 uh, says, as Jesus tells this, this parable, no one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch it on an old one. Otherwise, they'll have torn the new garment and the patch from the old one will not match the old. No one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and the wine will run out and the wineskin will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskin. God wants to do a new thing. Um, I, I remember uh, my friend Anthony Magaro used to always tell me the story uh, about this uh, a woman who would always bake a ham, and she would always cut the ends off of the ham before she would bake it. And, and the kids asked the, the, their mother one day, uh, Mom, why do you cut the ends off of the ham? And she says, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's just the way that, that my mom always did it. Let me call my mom and ask her. And so she calls up her mom and asks her, Mom, why did you always cut the ends off of the ham? Did it, was it because it baked better? Was it because it, it was able to make it more moist in the center? What, why was it? And she says, well, it was just the way my mother always did it. And so grandma was still alive, so they called grandmother and said, Gra Grandma, why did you cut the ends off of the ham before you baked it? Was it to, to make it more tender? Was it so it could cook better? And then grandma says, no, I had such a small oven, I couldn't fit the whole ham. I had to cut the ends off of it. And sometimes we think that, that we're doing the right thing and, and, and this is the way it always has to be and we don't even know why we're doing it. And God said, I want you to do a new thing, a new way. I want to transition you to a new place. See, I, I've seen some people with their relationship with God that they, they do so good with God when they're successful, when they're, when they're on top, when things are good in their relationships and, and, and things are almost, almost perfect, and, and, and everything is, they're, they're blessed, and they have a good job, and, and, and things are going so well, and, and those people, I've seen them, they come into church, and they worship God, and, and they're so committed to God in those moments, and, and, and then all of a sudden, when, when something goes awry in their life, and they get a bad report from the doctor, or maybe they lose their job, or, or, or maybe they're having issues in their family, or in their marriage, I don't know, uh, all of a sudden, in those moments, that they just don't know how to have a relationship with God, in the low moments because they blame God or they get bitter or they blame other people. And I never see that person again because they're, they don't know how to praise God in dark times. And I've seen people that are the opposite. I've seen people that, that, that when, when they're going through hell in their life, they're in church, they're worshiping, they're in tears, they're here at the altar getting prayer, they're, they're, they're on fire for the Lord, and then all of a sudden when things start going good for them, and they get a good job, and they get some money, and they get a new relationship, I've seen so many people, they're, they're in church, they're praying for a relationship, God, bring me a, bring me a woman, bring me a man, and they're on fire for the Lord, and then they get into a relationship, and then, then you never see them again. 
because they become more in love with the person they're dating than they are with the Lord because they don't know how to, how to have that contentment in any season that they're in. But this is what David said in Psalms chapter 34. It says, I will bless the Lord at, I will bless the Lord at, that's right, all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth. You have to be able to learn no matter what season I am transitioning to and from, I'm going to bless the Lord. Ecclesiastes says it like this. There is a season in life. There's, ev there's, there, there's a season for everything. A time to be born, a time to die, a, a time to rejoice. A time that it, Ecclesiastes goes through all these different times. But we are taught no matter what time you're in, you are to rejoice. The book of Leviticus says this. Um, I love Leviticus. Anybody have it memorized? I, I'll give you $100 if you get up here and quote Leviticus. Uh, my favorite book of the Bible. Just kidding. But there is this awesome verse in Leviticus uh, chapter uh, 23. It says, for you shall take for yourself on the first day. This is the day that people would come to the temple and to worship. Uh, it says, branches of palm trees, leafy trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? It, it means that this image of someone coming into church, rejoicing, praising God with, with a palm tree in one hand and a willow in the other hand. And I love that imagery because a palm tree represents what? Represents the beach, the good days, the, the, the blessed days. It, it stands up high. It, it's joyful. And then a willow, it's like a weeping willow. Represents the, the challenging times, the difficult times, the times where, where you're mourning. But Leviticus says no matter what season you're in, come into the house of the Lord rejoicing and praising God. Because he's the God of the palm trees and he's the God of the willows. And you have to learn how to rejoice no matter what season you are transitioning from or into. He's the God of them all. So what are you transitioning into? What, what, what season are you transitioning from? Uh, I, I thought about how a, a lot of people have difficult, difficulty in these moments of transition. People, when they transition from being a kid to being an adult, it's challenging for a lot of people. Uh, when, when you go through uh, adulting, they, they, they say, where, where you got to learn to pay your own bills. You, you got to learn to uh, pay your taxes. You got to learn to go grocery shopping. You got to learn to pay all your own bills. You got to learn to be a responsible man or a responsible woman. And, and you never had to do it before because mommy and daddy used to always take care of you and, and, and give you money and teach you and do things for you. But now you got to become an adult. And a lot of people don't transition well. They blame everybody else as why they can't transition well or why they can't be independent or why they can't do this. But the truth is you're not transitioning. Well, you got to learn how to transition from, from being a child to being an adult, from going to high school to going to college. I, I, I had a difficult time with that, I'll, I'll be honest, because when I, when I was in high school, uh, I, I was very sheltered by my parents. Uh, I was very, uh, my parents were very, very protective of me. I mean, Sunday mornings was sacred. I remember there was this one Sunday morning, I, I kind of violated the, the, the sanctity of Sunday morning. And I'll never forget, I was in high school, and uh, I was watching MTV on Sunday morning. And, and I was watching, uh, uh, it, was, it was like, it was a Beyonce video, I'll never forget. It might have been Destiny's Child, but all I remember is Beyonce was just shaking her booty in the video, like the whole time. And, and then my mom comes out of her room, like dressed to the nines, ready for church, and she sees me watching uh, the Beyonce booty shake video. And, and my mom, she, she, the grin on her face just, just went from blessed to I'm going to kill my son. And, and I'll never forget, she stands in front of the television and, and says to me, is this what you like, Isaac? And she starts dancing, doing the Beyonce booty shake right in front of me. I'm like, God, no, Mom, I'll never watch MTV again. And so that's, that's what I had in high school. When I went to college, I did not have my mom correcting me and booty shaking in, in my house if I was watching MTV or a Beyonce video. And, and I, I didn't transition well because I, I went from a very safe environment to an environment where I had all the freedom in the world. But because I didn't have the right foundation, I didn't have the right relationship with the Lord, I didn't get my identity and my security from the Lord, then when the freedom came, I, I ended up going wild and doing things that was never God's will for my life, but it was because I didn't know who I was in Christ, because I did not transition well. I know a, a, a lot of people, they don't transition well 
from uh, being single to, uh, to being married or being in a relationship. That's a challenge. Remember those days, Diamond? That was rough. Like you realize how like selfish you are all of a sudden when, when you get into marriage. And, 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 and we, we went through hell. You know, we, we, the, the first, first year, first two years, you know, Diamond had all these expectations of, of who the man that, that I was supposed to be. And I was supposed to be this man. But the problem was is, is I had zero experience being a husband. So I had no idea what I was doing. And, and I had no idea what I was doing. Diamond had this expectation of what a husband is supposed to be. And it was a good expectation. But the problem was is her expectation was of somebody that ha- was supposed to have 15, 20 years of experience being a husband. And I didn't have any. And I'll, I'll never forget uh, one of the biggest fights Diamond and I had. Uh, I don't, you know, it might have been when we were engaged uh, or, or, or married. I, I, f- I forget. It was one of the two. And, and we get in this fight. It might have been after, like, we went to marriage counseling. And, and Diamond got all bent out of shape. And she said to me, she, she's like, I, I, I just can't believe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marry a man that I'm more spiritual than in this relationship. You remember that, Diamond? I got so angry. I got like, so defensive. I, I remember I, I got in the car and I, and I, and I left. I didn't know where I was going to go because I, I had nowhere else to go. Like, where was I going to go? So I, I got in a car. I'm going like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go to Walmart and walk around because I'm angry. I'm frustrated. And, 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 and Diamond was expressing something, and I wasn't the man that, that she wanted me to be yet. But you know what happened is, is, is we, we started to rely on the Lord in that transition. See, if you rely on yourself and, and your own feelings when you're transitioning from being single to being married, then you're not going to do well. But if you rely on the Holy Spirit and learn how to forgive and learn how to listen and learn how to give your feelings some time a backseat and come humbly to your spouse and, and, and get to know them and ask God what you could do to help that marriage, then I'm telling you, you'll begin to transition well. But it, it wasn't easy at first. Now, any, anyone relate to that? That's in a new relation. It's, it's not easy. The, the, the two become one. It's not you anymore. It's us. It's us in this. We're, we're doing this together. We're serving the Lord together. We're building this family together. We're building this job together. We're, we're doing this together. It's not me and mine. It's us and ours. I know that you all know this already, but... You're not, you're not acting like it all the time, so I'm just going to keep preaching it until you do. Uh, I, I thought about how, you know, some people, they don't transition well uh, from being in a relationship or married to being single. I, I've, I've met so many people that they, they go from being in a relationship or married, and, and, and because of, it could be, could be the death of, of a spouse, a tragedy. It could be because of divorce. It could be because of a breakup. And, and, and that, that's a difficult transition, a, lot, a transition that maybe you've gone through or maybe you're going through right now. Uh, and a lot of people, they don't transition well from that. Uh, they, they, they go on the rebound. They jump into a relationship that God never intended them to be in because they'd rather be in the wrong relationship than, than be alone and single. Uh, but I, I truly believe, I remember I preached this one sermon one time about uh, being single and satisfied. And I, I think that that's the place that God wants us to be. And then when you're actually single and satisfied with the Lord, then God can bring the right man or the right woman into your life, not to complete you, but add to what God has already done. But if you're single and desperate, then you'll take anybody. You'll take the first person that, that, that looks at you or asks you out on a date because you just don't want to be alone. I always say it starts off a lot of times when people are looking for a, a man of the cross and then they'll just take somebody with a tattoo of a cross because they've been waiting so long. And that's because you're not transitioning well. Sometimes people don't transition well from, you know, being married to now you have kids. That's a big transition. Life is all about transition. When, when all of a sudden you're not making decisions just based off of you and your spouse, but now you've got to make a decision based off of your family. I remember we were trying to plan a vacation when our kids were really young. And where did I want to go? I wanted to go to St. Martin. That was where I wanted to go on vacation. Diamond's like, no, we're going to Disney. No, I want to go to Disney. I have to walk 25, 30 miles pushing a double stroller. I want to go to St. Martin and lay on a beach with a palm tree. I don't want to go to the weeping willows of, of Disney World. Uh, but that, but that's not, it, it's not about me and mine. It's about what is best for the family. For the fam- I, I also say this, I'll, I'll say this, just, just throwing out some, some, some good stuff this morning. When you have kids, don't start neglecting your spouse and giving your children all your attention. 
I've seen so many families do that, is all of a sudden they have a great marriage, and then you add a couple kids, and then they put their children ahead of their spouse. You know what a, a child needs more than anything? To see what a healthy marriage looks like. That's what children need so desperately. They, they don't need to f be the one to feel like the king or the one to receive all the attention. They need to see what a healthy marriage looks like. And I've seen so many parents that when they start having kids, they neglect the relationship with each other and, and, and all they're doing is focusing on the kids. No, you gotta have those date nights. You gotta continue to, to, to build that marriage and grow that marriage just as much as you're pouring in to your kids. I thought about how some people uh, don't transition well uh, when the kids leave the house then. It's an empty nest. Anyone, anyone going through that now? Then they come back. Thought you got rid of them, then they come, and they're back all of a sudden. Like, man, that didn't last long. I remember when I went away to college. I mean, I'm an only child, and uh, uh, my, 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 I left for college. Uh, I was gone one semester. My, my parents had an empty house for three months. I come back. For Thanksgiving break, September, October, November, three months, and I, I come back, and my parents tell me right when I walk in the door, oh, Isaac, I just want you to know, we adopted a Chinese family. We gave your room to one of them. You're going to have to sleep in the basement for, for Thanksgiving. I'm like, what? I'm gone for three months, and you, you replaced me with an entire family? What's going on? Not transitioning well, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> but 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 uh, you, you know what I'm saying is it, it, sometimes I, I've, I've seen parents that they don't know what to do because their whole identity was wrapped up in raising their kids and pouring into their kids and then their kids are gone and then they have no idea they got to reinvent themselves they got to find a new purpose because God is transitioning you out of the old and into the new if, if you're not catching on this is what life is all about transitioning you from a place that you're used to you're comfortable with some of you you've been comfortable single now you're in a relationship and it brings new added uh, emotions and challenges but God has that as a place of growth maybe you're married and God is adding children maybe you have children and now it's an empty nest. Maybe you're, you're single now for the first time. It's always a place of transition, but he is the God of the transition and he wants to do a new thing in you. You know, sometimes people don't, <laughs> I'm sorry if I, if I go too long, but I'm just, there's more. You know, I remember when I, when I started getting, you know, my stomach started getting fat all of a sudden when I was 30 two, 33 years old because I thought I could eat like I was 20. And all of a sudden I go on the softball team and, and all of a sudden I, I couldn't run like I used to. Transition. Transition. I, I remember the first time I, I, I looked at Diamond and Diamond said to me, you got hair coming out of your ears. I never had hair in my ears before. And I started getting hair coming out of my ears. And Diamond's like, that's disgusting. I'm like, well, do something about it. I can't see it. And the other day, she's like, I'm getting you for your birthday. I'm turning 40 this year. Well, Diamond said, well, I'm getting you for your birthday a, a nose hair trimmers because your nose hairs are out of control. And then Diamond actually said, maybe I won't get it so that no one will ever, no, no, no girls at the gym will look at you because you got nose hairs coming out like there's no tomorrow. Uh, because it's tr transition. You know, some people don't transition well. You know, you see people going through these midlife crises and, and all of a sudden, you, you know, they got, got the ponytail and the Mr. T starter kit going on, the, the chest hair coming out. And, and all of a sudden, you, you, you think that you, you want all this attention that from other people. You're not transitioning well. Life is all about transitions. And so uh, I said all this to, to get to this place, um, is that transition is part of life. And there are moments when we're going to go through transition. But this is the main point. God has prepared you for what you are transitioning into. God has already sowed the seed to prepare you for this new season that you are going into. As you read this passage, you see Jesus do this. Jesus tells this parable about sowing seed. Seed is the word of God. Sowing seed, sowing seed. And then all of a sudden, he, he tells the, the disciples that, that, that the seed is sown, and then the person that sows the seed goes to sleep. And then after Jesus tells that parable, he tells the disciples, let's get in the boat, and let's go to the other side. And, and they get into the boat, and they go into the other side. And as they're going to the other side, a, a category 
five squell hurricane pops up and all of a sudden they're, they're in this storm and the disciples don't know what to do. They're panicking. They're in the middle of transition. They're transitioning from one side to the next, one place to another, one level to a higher level. God wants to take them up, but they're in the midst of a storm on their way to the new season. It's like hell in the hallway. Remember that? And, and guess where Jesus was during this moment? Guess where he was? He was asleep. Doing exactly what he said he was going to do. He said that I'm going to scatter the seed. I'm going to pour into you. I'm going to give you the seed that you, that you need for this new transition, for this new level, this new season that I'm going to take you into. And, and then after I scatter the seed, I'm going to be asleep. But don't be afraid because I have already prepared you and I've already sown the seed that you need for this new season of your life. So don't be scared. Don't be troubled. You are prepared for this. The teacher is always silent during the test. Doesn't mean he's not there. Jesus is there. He's with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But the teacher is silent many times during the test. I, I remember when I would uh, take a test and I'd try and get, get some, some, some questions answered from the teacher about what they talked about or, or what they said. And, and the teacher was like, I already taught that to you. I already sowed that into you. See, God wants to prepare you now for the trial that is still to come. That is why when there is a sermon that is being preached and you say, man, I wish this person got this or this would be great for, for so-and-so. No, this sermon is for you. It is for the season that God is preparing you for. And you better allow that seed to come into your heart and grow and germinate because it is what you are going to need in this new season of your life. Jesus has already taught you so much that when you're in the middle of the storm, God's prepared you for this. You could get through this. When you go through a tragedy and maybe uh, someone in your life has tragically passed away, I want you, God, God has prepared you for this. If you're in a, a life now that you never thought you would be in or, or maybe you're in a new relationship or things are confusing and things are challenging, God has prepared you for this. He's already sowed the seed that you need for this moment. He's already taught you how to praise him through pain. He's already taught you how to be able to have joy in the midst of challenges. He's already taught you how to have the fruit of the spirit, how to have self-control how to uh, put your feelings aside and act humbly before that other person and, and forgive them. He's already taught you these things and now you're in the storm. All you need to do is allow the seed that God has already sown into your heart to begin to germinate and begin to grow. God has already prepared you for this. So what are you transitioning into right now? Don't let your hearts be troubled. God has prepared you for this. I, I close with this last point. The Apostle Paul writes, I started with this sermon, in Philippians chapter 11, 4, verse 11. He says, I've learned to be content in all seasons, uh, whether I'm abasing or abounding, whether I'm up or down, I've learned to be content, and I could do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And we already established that Paul was where when he wrote this. He was in, why are you yawning, Diamond? <laughs> he was in prison, that's right. Now, this is the prison that Paul is going to die in. Did you know that? He's going to die in about two years. Now, this isn't the first time Paul was in prison. You remember the first time Paul was in prison? He started praising God. Remember, he was praising God. He was in prison, praising God. And what happened when he was in that prison? Chains fell off, right? Do you think Paul wasn't praising God in this prison? I'm sure he was praising God in this prison. But for some reason, the chains weren't falling off. New season. He's in transition. See, Paul's whole life, he was used to evangelizing, and preaching, founding churches, that his whole life, that's what he was used to doing. He was used to being in prison and praising God, and the chains would fall out, and he'd walk right out the door. And now Paul's praising God, and the chains aren't falling off. Anyone ever dealt with that before? 
where I, I used to praise God and the, and the spirit of heaviness would be gone. Now it feels like, like, like I'm battling this thing differently. Does it mean that God has not changed? No, not at all. It means that you're in a new season, but God has something new that he wants to do through you in this season of your life. He's not gonna do it the way he used to. He has a new thing that he wants to do through you. And this is what I love about Paul. When the chains didn't fall off, he didn't get bitter and say, God, what, why, why didn't you take the chains away? Why am I still in prison? No, he said, I'm going to find my purpose in the prison. And he got that pen and paper. And he started writing letters. Philippians. Corinthians. 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And now we get to read that. And we get to hear the Holy Spirit through that letter that Paul wrote from prison because he found his purpose in this new season. You're in a new season. Find God's purpose in it. Paul did his greatest work in those two years he was in prison. He wrote all those epistles that we would never have if Paul wasn't in prison. What new season are you in right now? God has a new purpose for you in it. If you're able to, just, just stand to your feet right now. If you, if you could honestly say you're, you're in a little bit of a transition right now, just, just, just raise your hand right now. Yeah. You can put it down. Now, you know that this is part of life, right? Change. New season. New thing God wants to do. Same God doing a new thing. God has prepared you for this. Everybody look me in the eye right now if you can. God has prepared you for this new season, this new transition. I remember when, when I transitioned into being a pastor, I called my, my one good friend, his name is Jason Alvarez, and he's a pastor in West Orange. And he said these things I'll never forget. He said, because I was, I was nervous, I didn't, I, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to handle it, and this is what he said. He said, you were born for this. That's what he told me. And I wanna say that to somebody else. This new challenge that you're in, you were born for this. You are prepared for this. You are gonna get through this. You are going to get to the other side. You are not going to be in this transitional storm forever. God is going to bring you. Some of you, it's, it's your children right now. That's, that's, the, that's the challenge right now. And, and sometimes when it's our kids, we feel like it's completely out of our control. Like, I wish it was me because I, I feel like I could control it if it was me, if it was something I had to do. But when it's my children or when it's my spouse or somebody else, I, I feel like it's out of my control. Sometimes the best thing you could do, just take it out of your control, give it to God. God, I trust you. I, I, I know that you, they were, they were his kids before they were your kids. And he loves them in a way you never can. And he's going to help them through this season. Just trust God through this transitional storm. So, Father, I just thank you. I thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And just because I'm in a new season does not mean that you have changed. And I just pray for everyone in here right now that is in that place of transition, that they're in a new season right now. And change is hard. And some of you, you need to change your approach. You, you can't approach this new season the way you approached the previous season. You got to come up with a new approach. It's different. But God's prepared you for it. But you have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to grow. See, when we're in transition, we want everybody else to change. Man, this would be so much easier if they would do this and if they would do that and if they would change. But, but God's saying, no, 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 I, I need you to change. I need your approach to change. I, I need you to grow. I need you to go to a new level in your walk with me. I need you to step up your game and draw closer to me. Remember when Diamond said that to me about not being spiritual enough. Man, I could have gotten bitter. I could have gotten angry. But I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, you know, she's right. You're called for more, Isaac. 
And rather than getting mad at her, I looked myself in the mirror and said, I need to grow. I need to have a better relationship with the Lord. I need to be the one to, to grab my wife and say, let's pray about this. Let's go to church. Let's worship God. I need to lead. And I pray, Father, that we could get that spirit. If I, don't want, I don't need them to change in this season of transition, but I'm going to grow through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap if you would this morning. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful St. Patrick's Day Sunday. Uh, if you need prayer for anything, we'll have members of our prayer team up front. Uh, if you want to receive communion, we'll have it available to my right. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday for Palm Sunday. God bless.